In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about an important heterocycle in nature, this compound, which is NAD or NADP. We have a little R group here, so if this group is hydrogen, this is NAD+, and if this group is phosphate, this is NADP+. This compound is an enzyme helper, so enzymes speed up the chemical reactions in your cells. And they can do a little bit of chemistry on their own because they're made up of amino acids. We have some amino acids that have acidic and basic side chains, and those can donate and accept protons, just like acids and bases in all organic chemistry. Some amino acids can actually form a covalent bond with the molecule that they're acting on, and that molecule that they're reacting is called a substrate. But enzymes perform some almost magical reactions, and to do those, they need helpers. And these helpers are the coenzymes, and it's going to help the enzyme perform redox chemistry. So let's just talk about the structure of NAD. Often you see it just as the words or as a small abbreviation of the structure right over here. And this is the part of the structure that's going to be really important for the chemistry. So we can abbreviate it like this, but I want you to appreciate just how big it is. And so when this is going to actually get into an enzyme, into the active site of an enzyme where the reactions occur to help it, it, it's going to bind very specifically. There has to be a nice big pocket that is complementary to this large molecule. The long name for NAD is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So let me show you that in the structure. So this is the nicotinamide portion, and this has a positive charge on it in this structure. So that's going to be really important to the chemistry in a minute. Now over here we have our adenine, and this is the same base pair that's in DNA. And the dinucleotide portion refers to the fact that we have these ribose units connected to these heterocycles here. So both of these rings are heterocycles because we have nitrogens within rings. Now this coenzyme needs to be synthesized or biosynthesized in our body. And this nicotinamide portion can come from the diet. And an easy way to get it is through vitamin B3, which is also called niacin. Niacin or vitamin B3 is actually a mixture of these two com compounds, one of which is the amide, maps on very nicely here, and one of which is the carboxylic acid. Many foods are rich in vitamin B3. However, if we're not getting enough from our diet, we can synthesize this from tryptophan. Tryptophan is what we call an essential amino acid, and what this means is that humans cannot make it themselves. And so if we lack tryptophan, we lack vitamin B3 or niacin, and this can make you really sick. A disease associated with niacin deficiency is called pellagra, and this was first characterized in the 1700s in Spain and became a real problem in the early 1900s in the southern United States. It was an epidemic among uh, poor people in rural areas, and the origin was they were not getting enough tryptophan in their diet. But they were getting this disease where their skin would darken and they'd show signs of dementia and all sorts of problems. A doctor named Joseph Goldberger hypothesized that this was coming from a nutrient deficiency, and he was able to prove that people were deficient in niacin by an experiment that he did in dogs. NAD plus promotes the oxidation of an alcohol to a carbonyl compound. Now, if we're thinking about organic chemistry, we're like, well, we might do that in the lab with chromic acid or something like that, but that is not compatible with life. So this part of the molecule allows this oxidation process to occur in a biological system without harmful reagents and things like that. Let's look at how this works. Okay, here I'm just showing a substituted alcohol. We have R groups, we're not defining what these are. And we're going to have our enzyme do some work. I said enzymes, they can act as acids and bases and they do this really well all the time. Now what's going to happen with our arrow pushing is that this base is going to take the hydrogen off of the somewhat acidic alcohol that we have here. So we can show our arrow taking that hydrogen atom. Now something really cool is going to happen. 
these electrons are going to push down. We can't make five bonds to carbon, so hydrogen with its electrons is going to leave this molecule. And the enzyme is going to put it in close proximity to this part of NAD+, and that will actually accept hydrogen with two electrons. So we'll push this down to make our double bond, and this hydrogen is going to come off with its electrons and attach right here. Now, how on earth can this happen? And the magic that goes on here is because of this positively charged nitrogen. This is an electron sink, and so it can do this interesting chemistry by neutralizing the positive charge on nitrogen. This is an aromatic compound, but the positive charge makes it a bit higher energy. So we can continue to push electrons around the ring and give that nitrogen right here a lone pair. And this is the driving force for this reaction. Let's see what we get out of this. Here's what happened to NAD+. We added a hydride here, so we have a new hydrogen with its electrons. We moved this bond over here and neutralize the charge. So nitrogen now has three bonds and is neutral. This compound is actually called NADH, and that's the abbreviation used to represent this reduced form with the extra hydrogen atom. And we'll also produce a ketone from this reaction. So each of these coenzymes with the positive charge has a counterpart that has a hydride attached to it. Now, the concentration of NAD plus in the cell is higher than the concentration of NADH. And so there's more NAD plus available. So usually NAD is the coenzyme involved in taking alcohols to carbonyl compounds. Now, when we want to actually deliver a hydride, often it'll be NADPH that does that job. The concentration of this coenzyme is higher than NADP+, and so this is available for biosynthetic reactions that involve transfer of hydride. Let's look at one. In the biochemical pathway that synthesizes fatty acids, NADPH is going to reduce an enone. Here's our reduced coenzyme, and here's our enone. Enones can react in two positions, right here next to the carbonyl or at the end of this conjugated system. And in this case, we're going to have it react here in a conjugate addition reaction or a Michael reaction. In this reaction, nitrogen is going to push in its lone pair, remaking an aromatic compound and popping this hydride off onto the end of this system. Let's do the arrow pushing. So nitrogen's lone pair pushes in, these electrons are going to move over, and we can't make five bonds to carbon, so hydride is going to be added here. And I'm just going to push the electrons up onto carbon to make an enolate, but you could also push them through the oxygen atom. It's up to you. We're going to form our oxidized coenzyme, NADP+, and this enolate, which has resonance with the carbonyl here. Now, since this is happening inside of an enzyme, we can just show an acidic proton on the enzyme donating a proton to get rid of this negative charge. So the enolate attacks this hydrogen, putting the electrons onto this basic, generic basic residue. And here's our final reduced enone and our deprotonated basic residue on the enzyme. To sum up, NAD is an important coenzyme derived in our body from things that we cannot make ourselves. So we have to get some of these precursors from our diet. This is made up of heterocycles, and this positively charged nitrogen, which you'll see in a few other coenzymes, is really important because it can act as an electron sink. It's stable enough like this because this pyridine ring is an aromatic compound. So this charged ring, this pyridinium, allows a hydride to be transferred to this molecule, producing another stable molecule that is non-aromatic. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.